Well, so anyway, we have to spread the good news. We have to spread the gospel. The book of Romans as well also says in the book of Romans 2, 12 to 16. What does it say? It says, all who sin apart from the law, we also perish apart from the world law. All who sin apart from the law, we also perish apart from the law. All who sin under the law will be judged by the law. 13. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight. But it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. First, we have to hear the law. Second, we have to obey the law. So this is what I'm saying now has to do with every one of us, the people that are here to know or hear about the Christ, or people that already have a relationship with Christ, we have to ask ourselves, am I actually obeying the law? Because you will be perished, people will perish apart from law. People will perish or they will be judged based if they are under the law. But not all those who hear the law are righteous in God's sight. If I hear about Jesus, if I know about him, okay, it's not enough. Am I obeying him? He said, not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. And that's where we should pass and think and ask God for mercy, ask for, for grace to totally submit to the law um, to, be, to be obedient to the law that God has given unto me. First, we need to hear the word law. Second, we have to obey the law. And it's those people that obey the law that they will declare righteous. Okay? Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves. Even though they do not have the law, they show that the requirements of the Lord are written on their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness. Their thoughts sometimes accusing them and other times even defending them. Which one is yours? Which one is mine? Am I being defended? Are you being defended by the, by, the, by the law? Which one is yours? Which one is mine? We need to look about it. We need to think about this. Okay? This will take place. 16, verse 16 of Romans 6, 12, 16 say, This will take place on the day when God judges people's secret through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Paul was saying this. And we know that Paul was an antichrist was an antichrist. What Paul did with the 12 apostles that Jesus left behind before he had an encounter with Jesus. Oh my word. You need to read the Bible. He was persecuting them. He was dealing with them until he had an encounter with Jesus Christ himself. I prayed everyone under my voice that you are, you still don't have, know that Jesus is God or is Lord you will have an encounter. As he had come by himself to Paul, he will come to you by himself. My word has gone up right now and he will go and deliver that message. You will have an encounter with Jesus Christ to know that he is God and God alone. Because he has already said in the book of four, uh, Matthew 24, 14 that unless we all hear the gospel, everybody hear the gospel about Jesus Christ, the world is not going to end. So whatever we are going through now, the world is not ending yet. He said when they bow the world to end, we will hear the rumors. <laughs> when they bow, but it's not, the world is not yet to end. It's not ending there. So if anybody says to you that the world is ending, it's not ending. It's not ending until every one of us come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, put your situation aside. Situation, everybody has situation. All of us have issues. Well, if you don't have issues, I thank God for your life and you will never have issues. But majority have issues. 
If you breathe in on that issues, it will take it will distract you away from the goal. You're not an accident. I'm not an accident. None of us are an accident in this world. We are here on a purpose. Life is a journey. We are here on a purpose. It says to us in that Romans 2, 16, that this will take place on the day when God judges people secretly through Jesus Christ, as my gospel de declares. So, and it says in verse, if, let me go back to 15 again. They show that the requirements of the law are written in their hearts, okay? Their conscience also bearing witness. Their thoughts sometimes accusing them and others even at times defending them. What's yours doing to you? Is he accusing you? Is he defending you? Hmm? We have to know. Are you bearing witness? Am I bearing witness? So I want to end today's message. First, I'll be coming back because Jesus Christ has to be preached to the whole world. And we have been given that assignment to go out there and preach. If you are here to know Jesus, the book of Matthew 24, 14 says that unless Jesus Christ is preached all over the world, there's no hand coming. Okay? No hand coming. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you believe? If you're not believe, I pray that God will make you to have an encounter with him in Jesus' name. Two people had an encounter with Jesus, with God themselves, directly by God. And I pray that today, that my word will go out and meet people, especially the 80s. I want to say something again. You know, I believe after the end of this pandemic, I believe that society will be so good. I believe. And God will count me worthy, he will count you worthy. In the mighty name of Jesus. So none of us will die in the process of this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Like I said earlier on. I pray for those people that has fallen in this. That God Almighty will keep their family. In the mighty name of Jesus. But even those that have gone. Because nobody is immune to this. It's only by the grace that we are here. It's only by the mercy. So it comes to a stage in me. To start asking myself. It's not about pandemic anymore. It's about me. Where am I going in the end of the situation? What's going to happen to me? Because we are going to go one day. Like I said, we will not go before our time. We will fulfill the purpose of God while we are here. Because we are on this world for a purpose. And the most dangerous death in this world when we die on purposefully. If you don't fulfill the purpose of God, that's the most dangerous. If a 10 year old died and fulfilled the purpose why he was called to this world he didn't die he died a celebrity it is when we die without not fulfilling the purpose that we need to check ourselves pandemic is not something that will be like like that it's a something that needs to draw us closer to god it's a something that you need to leave you leave your problem aside you, that problem is going to be there and it, who knows that problem could be your distraction it might be distracting you from getting to know to God, leave that problem. Let God solve the problem. Many of us, we, I myself, my problem, I put it in my front for a very long time, brooding on me, and then I can see myself fading away from the purpose of God. I was fading away. Until you drop that at the feet of God, you can't do anything about your problem. You cannot even solve that problem yourself. It's God that is going to solve the problem. And if you leave the God that is going to solve your problem, out of that equation, and you're trying to iron out to that problem yourself. You will keep ironing until the whole thing burnt out. That's not what God is telling us. We need to come to the knowledge of Christ. We need to fine tune our relationship. I cannot emphasize, I cannot overemphasize this. That I'm bringing Jesus Christ to your door if you're not knowing Jesus. Jesus is the key no matter who you are no matter what you believe jesus is the key and until jesus is preached are you here and accept him i don't know the book said you will be judged according to your law okay but jesus christ is the key that's roman go back and read roman 12 yourself anybody under or in roman 2 
read, read you can read the whole of romance or you could just take it from two but you could read the whole one to six one to sixteen romance four to sixteen what is he saying or go and read about matthew 24 and when you get to 14 he's saying that the kingdom of god will be preached the whole world as a testimony before the end comes if the kingdom is not preached if everyone everyone has not heard about the the, the kingdom the gospel the word can be hanged we are just going to be is coming jesus is coming until the whole world heard about him there's a there, there is a video there's a film there that you know i like to show it even in my in my you know at, at school or now i think i can be freely go back to school now because you're not you cannot even teach you cannot even teach word you cannot even call jesus before see the whole world now everybody is coming back to jesus you cannot even preach jesus in school i was in a class one day and a student brought in a, a drink into the classroom and he was sipping that drink and we're taking that drink and then so miss avita said this drink shout out to you i know i love you i know if you get in touch with this my video you know so and then we start chatting he said in that car um, um in the cup in the drink is so nice and said oh that is so nice it was not meant to bring that drink into the classroom in the first place but well it was allowed because God wants to open my eyes to some certain things. It was just after the lunch break, but the school hasn't, we are, we're still in the lunch. So it just came in like 10 minutes before the end of, end of the break. So he was allowed to finish his, a drink or something. So in the course of it, we started chatting and then ended that drink, the right monster, the right drink, the right monster and the right devil there. And I said, are you drinking it? I said, oh, this is so delicious. I said, really? I said, yes. Do you want to have a taste? I said, no. I said, how can you die? Can they write something devil? Clearly, and CC says that you're reading it or you're taking it. And he said, I means I'm a hatist. I don't even believe in God, you know? And the most of it, the, then they were coming in before the class starts. They were coming in because it was 10 minutes before the real class starts. It was after lunch, during lunch. They were coming into the class. I was asking them, 80% of 15 to 16 years or 15 to 17 years old students said they are atheists. That's the way the world was going. They don't believe in God. And one of them told me that, oh, my mom said we are hip. I said, okay, so when you were given back, when your mom gave back to you, brought you into his eye, a hand like that, you were an ape. And then how do you not turn to a baby? I said that. So as God we have it, God took his way that day. I'm not going to say more than that. But I believe that when these things have gone down, that we will be able to go freely and begin to call about Jesus. So we can see what is going on in the uh, in our world right now. People are praying. People are leaning down to talk to God. That's what I want to believe that is going to happen after this pandemic. That we can be able to freely go out there and preach the gospel. And be able to look into ourselves. You know? And then believe in God Almighty that has kept us thus far. It is very, very important that we fine tune ourselves. Don't get locked out. Don't get locked out. Yes, they, 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 there's lockdown. But you yourself, don't get locked down. Get something doing. I was telling my, my children, the, 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 the adult one, like, thank you for those people that wish Debbie happy birthday yesterday. They all come back from school. They all came back from school because of the pandemic. Okay? And I told her, I said, God is giving you a second chance. Some of the lessons that you have gone out there. She's been outside there for 44 years, living alone, you know, in college and everything. I said, those lessons I taught you before you left this house that you didn't take. God is giving you the second chance to come and take the test now. And she agreed with me because she's been out there. And she knows that, oh, she was right, all these things. I said, mommy, it's, it's, it's your right. So even children, every one of us, we need something that we need to gain from these things. All of us, is a second chance for us. Second chance in many ways. Second chance in many ways. No matter how bad your situation is, this morning during the during devotion, we, we sang, Can't your blessings name them one by one? 
Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And you'll be surprised, even in the midst of this dog that you will still count your blessings and bless the name of the Lord. Because some people that are better than me, better than you, they come. They don't have that opportunity anymore. But we can we still have the opportunity to retrace back our step to God. To retrace back our step, to know that pandemic is not the end of the world. Eternity is it is. Where do we want to go after pandemic? People that are for now, where do they go? Where do you want to go? Fantomi, our relationship, pain to God, has Holy Spirit to be our best friend right now. Well, for a, for a very long time, we're studying Holy Spirit in the in this course of this um, pandemic. And I know some people that is online, that on my prayer morning, every morning, we know that we have spent huge amount of time studying Holy Spirit. You know, before these things have actually started, Holy Spirit has prepared us. We studied about our shepherd in the month of February, not even though there's going to be this. God has prepared us from January. He's been preparing us. In this stage, what's your best friend? Where you cannot go to your friend anymore? The, the, everybody of you have to be at home. The best you can do with your friend is to make a call, which is very good. You need to check on people. But your best friend right now is Holy Spirit. To be able to tune you up, to give you grace where you are struggling, to help you, to comfort you, to instruct you, to guide you, to nourish you, to nurture you. Anything we need to know, we need the Holy Spirit this season. And we need to be genuinely come to him and surrender ourselves, our weakness, our strength to him. Because we do not have an high priest, we cannot sympathize with our, our weakness. He just wants us to come to him and say, this is my weakness, oh Lord, help me. And you leave it for the Holy Spirit. And you will see him granting you grace on a daily basis. But don't brood on it, don't stand on it. Go ahead and make best out of your life. I want to hand it here. And I want to say, it's been it's been a pleasure coming out this afternoon. It's been a pleasure, I'm just sorry, this morning, to talk to us again, to encourage us. And I know maybe you pick one or two things from what I've said in my ranting. Maybe you pick one or two things and then go back to God generally. If you don't know God, I'm telling you, you need to ask God. And I'm going to pray. Like I said, two people in the Bible, they had an encounter with God themselves. But our prayer can help people to get to know God. Not, not many of us will be able to come out here. But the, our prayer will go out there. The two people that had an encounter, that the devil owed so badly under their captive, and Moses and Paul, saw so which on Paul. Moses, as we know, he was a savior. He was meant to deliver the Israelites out of the wilderness into promised land. But devil had him captive for a very long time until he had an encounter with God himself on the Mount of Sinai. When Holy Spirit comes to him in a flaming fire, the fire was dead, but the bone, the, 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 the push went upon him. And that was how God drew him to him and started talking to him and said, I am the I am. I pray to God Almighty, every one of you out there that are yet to believe in Christ, even the you that were that was slotting the children of God, as God arrested, showed himself to Moses, he will show himself to you. You will add an encounter with you. Not only you, not only Moses. Paul was the same. Paul was even bad. Moses was actually just, you know, pounding his own kennel, looking after his... Jethro, his father, he lost some sheep because he was meant to be a shepherd himself. And God was teaching him on that, that whatever that he was going through at the time, how to manage sheep because he has some sheep there. <laughs> and we know we human beings were so terrible in so many ways. I'm not taking me out of, take myself out of um, equation here, but we're so terrible. But so God helped him to be able to deliver the Israelites out of the hand 
you know, but he had to go to process until God showed himself to Moses. The God that showed himself to Moses, my word that come out of my mouth, we go into your hearts, Antichrist. People that are yet to believe that Jesus is real, that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that God Almighty brought into this world for me and you, you will have an encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you will have an encounter. I pray to all those people that are out there, that they are yet to know cross or they are being rigid in their mind. Apart from that, you'll be the one that has been subjecting the children of God to captivity. I pray today that you have an encounter with God in Jesus' name. And people like you, like Saul as well, we know the story of Saul before he became Paul. He was antichrist. He was really an antichrist. He was persecuting the children of God until he had an encounter. He had an encounter with Jesus directly. I pray all of you out there that are yet to know God, you will have an encounter directly with God in the mighty name of Jesus. This word that has come out of my mouth will not go empty. It will go unfulfilled. A lot of people are saved today in the name of Jesus. To this word that is coming out of my mouth, you will save in the name of Jesus. Paraventure, things of life has turned you away from God and you believe there's no God anymore. I pray and you are backsliding. Holy Spirit will bring you back home in the mighty name of Jesus. All of us that are there, we are lukewarm. Wow, hot are cold. God said, if your heart be hot, if your cold be hot, in the book of Revelation 3, but I will split you out if you are lukewarm. Every one of us that are lukewarm, this season, oh Lord Daddy, you will bring us back to you. You will release grace unto those people that are backslide. The issues of life are brought them out of you. You will bring them back, oh Lord. Everyone that are, every soldier that has been injured in the journey of life, in the journey as a child of God or as children of God, I pray that God will heal your heart, will heal emotionally, will heal psychologically, and God will bring you back to you. You will find peace and comfort and joy in your God again, in the mighty name of Jesus. And those that are, you know, selling, you're selling, you're saying, keep selling, keep selling your boat. I pray that your boat will not capsize in the mighty name of Jesus. You will reach your destination in the name of Jesus. You will not go back. You will not go back, O oh Lord. God will draw us over. I want to pray for all the pastors, all the ministers of God all over the world, that as the saints that are serving God in truth and spirit, that God will keep strengthening you. The grace of God will be sufficient for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will see to the end in the name of Jesus. Every one of us that day, I die no, I don't know you, will not be a portion. Call, welcome, a grateful, faithful servant will be our own portion in the end in the name of jesus pandemic is not the end eternity is the end anyone that dies now that goes home is having even say from all all the tribulation that are about to be coming later on in the world later on as the time goes on but i pray that every one of uh, under my voice that almighty god will see us through to the end we will not miss it the grace of God will continually be strengthening us. I think, thank you, Jesus, for this moment that you have given unto me. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord, Father, for grace. Because it could be only your grace that will bring me out here again this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every one of us. Keep us safe. Keep us safe. Keep us safe under your umbrella. Everyone under my voice, oh, Lord, I pray that none of us will die, but we will live to fulfill the purpose of God. We will not die unfulfilled. We will not die unfulfilled. We will see the end of this pandemic. He will not see our end. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not go before our time. We are saved. Our children are saved. Our home are saved. The nation in the world are saved, oh Lord. And we ask, oh Lord, that the Holy Spirit, you overrun. In the book of Genesis, I actually wanted to end it now. But in the book of Genesis 1, Quickly, I just go to Genesis 1. It says that, that the earth, the, the Genesis 1, verse 1, 2. In the one, it said, In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. At the moment, there's darkness upon the face of the deep of the world right now, called COVID 19, called coronavirus. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let that be light. We pray that Holy Spirit will move upon the face of the 
four corners of this world today in the name of Jesus. And we bring light into this darkness. God, we separate this darkness, O oh Lord, from light. And we keep us his own children in the name of Jesus. And, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. I pro, O oh Lord, I said, O oh Lord, by the authority, not by my own power, but the authority Lord Jesus has given unto me, let there be light. Four corners of this world, let there be light, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, who overrun, begin to overrun. Who overrun the world right now, O oh Lord, and put a stop to this once and for all. And let your name alone be glorified. We say, Hallowed be your name. Thank you, Most High God. Thank you, King of Kings. I return the glory back to you, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying this morning or this afternoon. Thank you for listening to me. God bless us. And you hear my voice again. Please, if you want to share this, if you're blessed and you want, you think you're blessed with this message and you want to share it, please go ahead. Let's spread the gospel as well. Let's help each and every one of us. Somebody might be going through something and they need this, you know. And it's a bit of a distraction for what is going on. Let's distract ourselves because there's a lot of fear going on. I'm not going to talk about it again now because I've already heard the prayer. So until you hear my voice again, I say good afternoon and good morning. God loves us. God bless us. Bye for now, everybody. Bye. God bless. See you later.